Hello everybody, it's me Ghost Critic here and I thought I'd better start catching up with these Ultimate Graphic Novel Collections. I haven't done one in forever. I've got quite a lot of books to catch up on. Um, this um, week I'll try and... I'll try. <laughs> I'll try and get uh, maybe a couple out each week to try and catch up. I'll do my best. That's all I can say. Um, today's video, as you can see from the title, it is New X-Men and it's the E for Extinction storyline. Um, Grant Morrison on writing duties and Frank Quietly on art. And I have these all in single, so I had read this before and it was, I'm sure it was about this time that I did start reading... Um, the X-Men title and then got all the kind of back issues and then continued um, buying it from then and it was this just this fantastic um, cover art by Frank Quietly that just blew me away it was like I love this cover what is going on these are X-Men I don't recognize and you know what love him or hate him when you put Grant Morrison on like a, a proper mainstream um, title that has kind of been dragging its heels for, for some years, you know he's going to shake things up. I mean, it was, originally it was just X-Men. Grant Morrison came on, it's now called New X-Men and they were definitely a new breed. Same faces just different costumes um yes away went the kind of the the brightly colored spandex kind of very superheroish type of costumes um and in came the kind of the black ribbed leather um army type of look um for the x-men um grant morrison also introduced the idea of this the the secondary mutation within the mutants um most visibly seen here in this by um both um emma frost who discovered now she can um become basically a living diamond um the only um, downside of that is that she can no longer use her kind of psycho telepathic telekinesis powers uh, while she's in diamond form and Beast became a lot more feline looking um, within this book um, so there was a lot of new stuff that um, Grant Morrison threw in here. He also, I mean, despite the fact that this book ends um, with like a Shi'ar spaceship coming down um, onto the grounds of the school, it's very kind of ground level based. Um, a lot more emphasis on the on the school. Um, not. A great deal. You see a bit of it within this collection, but if you read further on from this story arc, and um, they do collect or are going to collect the next four or five issues of uh, New X Men, uh, there was a lot more basis on the school, um, the kind of ever growing mutant population. Um, it kind of kicks off with a kind of strange bald-headed lady. Um, we don't quite know who she is to begin with, um, but her plans include um, basically the destruction of Genosha, the kind of independent um, island where all the mutants live. Um, and she basically, well, bombs the whole island and kills millions and millions of mutants which you know doesn't make the x-men uh, a happy bunch of people uh, we eventually find out that this woman is cassandra nova cassandra nova being um the twin sister of um professor xavier who knew? Um, I don't know how much, I can't even remember much of what um, was explained in here, but apparently, um, this is Grant Morrison for you, um, Cassandra Nova escaped from the womb during a miscarriage. It's 
Grant, no, it's Grant Morrison, people. It's Grant Morrison. You, you're not going to expect anything less of this. Um, and she basically has grown up to be an evil, sadistic little bitch. Um, and we get the introduction of Master Mold, which is um, rebuilding itself and rebuilding Sentinels. Though they're a little bit wild at the moment um, in the um, jungles of Ecuador, where um, Cyclops, Wolverine and a three-faced mutant, not the most beautiful looking of uh, mutants, um, they kind of go and investigate um, and take down a few sentinels along the way. Uh, the big kind of cliffhanger, I guess, at the end, um, Professor Xavier reveals himself to be a mutant finally um, and lets everybody know that, you know, the school is housing all these uh, mutant children who they're being trained um, on their on their mutant abilities. Um, yeah, Grant Morrison shook things up big time. Um, <coughs> I mean, he did that. He kept it, like I said, he kept it a lot of it at the ground level, um, how the people of Earth, humanity, um, were kind of dealing with mutants at the time, um, how their reaction to the school, um, the children within the school, you get to see a lot more of their characters coming through as you progress through um, the new X-Men and Grant Morrison's run. Um, this, of course, all coming before um, House of M and No More Mutants and all that um, kind of gubbins that came after it. Um, but a really great book. The artwork by Frank Quietly. I, I'm a big fan of Frank Quietly's work. I love these kind of elongated legs with kind of a, a short body and torso on. Um, the very kind of very detailed costume. Um, uh, designs that he puts into it. Uh, anybody who's read the the Batman and Robin before they rebooted it all when Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly were on it, you'll know the kind of artwork I'm talking about. Um, but a great book, great read. Fortunately, it was unfortunate, I should say, it was only four issues long, so um, not that great a deal compared to other titles where you've had like maybe six or seven issues in. Um, towards the back we have um, a little kind of a uh, few pages on Grant Morrison the writer and what brought him onto, um, <coughs> onto the title and Frank Quietly. Um, some of his artwork on there and the kind of variant covers he also did with it. Um, uh, let's see, art gallery and sketch book. Hopefully you can see that. Um, some more sketch designs for our our new mutants. Um, these were clearly um, an influence on the very first um, X Men um, film movie that came out. Um, directed by Brian Singer and then there was an article about the writer again and how um, Grant Morrison basically reinvented um, the X-Men for a, for a 21st century audience basically and then the further reading at the back um, lets us know yes we're getting the kind of the next part of this storyline which was Imperial in volume 24 that one hasn't come out yet but it's on its way um, so yeah that was uh, New X-Men great book I like the new direction it took back then uh, <coughs> but I think it was quickly um, not so much well I guess it was kind of retconned with the whole um, no more mutants um, storyline uh, because Morrison certainly did bring in a whole heap of new characters. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. Um, bad being Beak. Do you remember Beak? Oh, terrible character. I um, really didn't like him. Um, and the, the thing that Grant Morrison also did with this was, I mean, 
X-Men has always had this kind of soap opera kind of type of deal, but he certainly threw in the, the soap opera-esque tropes like um, <clears throat> the kind of love triangle between Emma, um, Scott and um, Jean Grey and the basic breakdown of Scott and Jean's um, marriage. Um, so I can, I can understand why some people may not have liked it because it was a bit too kind of I don't know, Dallasy, I don't know, dynasty, soap opera type deal. So maybe people didn't like that so much. But it just kind of brought, like, like he says in the article, he was bringing the X Men into the 21st century. Um, so if you you can get this in normal paperback, very easy to buy. Um, definitely a pick up for the artwork if you like Frank Quietly, and I love it. And if you want to see a kind of reinvention and um, the influences that Brian Singer took, um, stylized wise anyway, maybe not story wise, um, for his first X Men film. So that's another one down. Um, the next one, let's swivel my chair around, it will be um, Brian Michael Bendis' Secret War. I'll try and get this out by the end of the week. Bye bye!